In 1945, the crew of the USS New York spotted what they thought was a Japanese balloon weapon following their ship. The captain ordered that they shoot it down. It was only after firing at it did they realize they were actually shooting at the planet Venus. Now, those balloons in 1945 and this balloon surveillance today are two very different things. But I wanted to bring up that history because even trained military professionals have trouble discerning this stuff which is what made former President Trump's son's tweet this morning so very concerning. At 11.21 a.m., Donald Trump Jr. tweeted, if Joe Biden and his administration are too weak to do the obvious and shoot down an enemy surveillance balloon, perhaps we just let the good people of Montana do their thing. An hour after that tweet, the balloon was sighted over northwest Missouri, which is very far from Montana. So Don Jr. was effectively telling his followers in Montana to shoot their guns in the air at a target that was not actually there, to just shoot at whatever they thought was the balloon, at an object 60,000 feet in the air that they couldn't have hit even if it was above them. Tonight, Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene echoed the same civilian call to arms, saying, quote, it would be great if an average Joe shot it down because China Joe won't. Now, Don Jr. and Marjorie Taylor Greene may be the more, more, more extreme than, than most human beings, but they were not alone. Republican Congress people and senators and the former president himself have all been jumping up and down all day, urging someone to shoot it down. Shooting down this balloon may be how this ultimately ends, but it is risky. The Pentagon's stated reason for not shooting down the balloon is the danger it could pose to civilians on the ground either because this giant thing lands on some poor, unsuspecting civilian, or because whatever is used to shoot it out of the sky hits a civilian. But I think this Republican instinct to shoot first and ask questions later, particularly as it relates to China, that goes beyond the actual logistics and geopolitical situation our country happens to be in right now. I know it is difficult to remember because President Trump has said so has had so many scandals and said so many things since. But when Trump was a candidate for president, anti-China sentiment was basically a core part of his platform. Let's say China. 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 Trump was truly obsessed with China, but he wasn't obsessed with real issues between the U.S. and China. He was obsessed with using China as a punching bag, as something he could point to at his rallies and get the crowd to cheer. China has always been one of Trump's go-tos, but it became really his favorite thing at the start of the pandemic. It's a disease, without question, has more names than any disease in history. I can name... Kung flu, Wuhan, Got Wuhan was catching on, coronavirus, right? Kung flu, yeah. The Republican Party loves a punching bag, especially when that punching bag is not American. And the party that has built its platform on nativism and isolationism also loves to fearmonger about foreign threats. So when an opportunity arose, literally 60,000 feet in the air, the GOP had a field day. The next balloon might be filled with another virus. Pop, droplets all over, we're all on ventilators again. Now, how do we know the next balloon isn't loaded up with bioweapons? Just a little seepage over Nebraska, there goes the heartland. What is your greatest concern as we track something that is the size of three buses now that China says was taken by wind, wind that we can't substantiate. My concern is that the uh, federal government obviously doesn't know what's in that balloon. Is that bioweapons in that balloon? Is it, did that balloon take off from Wuhan? You know, we don't know anything about that balloon. That was the Republican chair of the House Oversight Committee. And he is right about one thing. He doesn't know anything about that balloon. But he did not say that. Instead, he said, maybe it's a bioweapon. Maybe it's from Wuhan. Shoot it down. Also, blame Biden. This balloon is tailor-made for the modern-day GOP. Joining us now is Democratic Senator John Tester of Montana. He's also the chairman of the Defense Appropriations Subcommittee. Senator, thank you so much for being here tonight. I'll get right to it. When did you first learn 
about this balloon and how did you learn of it? Wow, uh, it was, uh, I, le I, learned, I learned yesterday is when I, uh, when I learned about it. And, uh, and quite honestly, um, I was very disturbed by what I had heard where we had a surveillance balloon that was flying over Montana, a place where people appreciate freedom and, and privacy, a place where we have 150 ICBMs, uh, and and a, a balloon that was uh, uh, that was put into space by by China. Um, this is a very uh, a bad situation, quite frankly. Uh, China has been trying to replace us as the world's economic leader and military leader for some time now. And uh, they've been done some very provo provocative things around Taiwan and in the Indo-Pacific. They do things on the internet all the time that uh, are not helpful. Um, and so uh, we need to get to the bottom of all this. We need to get to uh, find out why decisions were made that were made. And I'm not saying they were wrong decisions, but we need to find out why the decisions that the military made were made the way they were. Um, a lot of that information can't be given outside. Uh, some of it can be, and we'll get as much of it as we can out to the public. But but in the end, we need to find out what has happened, why it happened, and make sure this never happens again. We, we need to absolutely make sure this country is safe. And, uh, and the surveillance balloon, I think, uh, at least from my perspective, compromises that somewhat. Senator, I know that a lot of your colleagues on Capitol Hill have been fairly aggressive in terms of their suggestion of what should be done here. They've been saying, shoot it down. You have not publicly advocated for that. Do you agree with the Biden administration's rationale here? That's why we're having the hearing, to find out what the rationale that was used to determine whether to shoot it down or let it fly, what was done to try to uh, make it so that it was ineffective in gathering information. Um, and and that that's all very... Uh, important information. Um, uh, look, uh, I, I'm not there sitting in the seat that our military generals and uh, are. Uh, the truth of the matter, I put a lot of faith in them to do the right thing. But we also have to make sure they have to be held accountable for the decisions they do make. And uh, that's what the hearing is going to be. Hopefully we get that done as soon as possible. I think you have, you know, very nicely articulated your concerns about this, the, the threat, potential threat here you see in terms of national security. But there has been a degree of alarm on the part of the right as far as it concerns this balloon and China in general that I think a lot of people see as unnecessarily nativist, unnecessarily isolationist. I mean, do you have any thoughts about the people who have been saying, oh, this balloon could be from Wuhan. It might be filled with, you know, COVID or, you know, any number of paranoid conspiracy theories that as of right now seem largely unfounded. Do you have thoughts on that kind of rhetoric at this moment? Well, the, the worst thing we could do is play politics for their national security. That's absolutely a non-starter. The second thing is, is we need to get to the truth. We need to find out what the truth is. There's all sorts of theories and ideas and uh, thoughts out there by different people that don't know what they're talking about. The bottom line is we want to have people come to this hearing that do know what they're talking about and can justify what's going on and what has happened uh, and how many times this has happened before where we've had a surveillance balloon potentially fly over this country. And so it, it, it's, uh, look, conspiracy theories can, can go all over. There is one thing that I believe to be a fact, though. China is our pacing threat in this world. We need to treat it as such. And so when they send a surveillance balloon over this country, it isn't to pick up information on the weather. It's to surveil us. It's to pick up secrets, to find out what we're doing. Uh, this is our airspace, not theirs. That is completely improper to do. And, and we just need to get the military in to tell us what the actions, why the actions that were done were done and find out what's going to happen in the future if this happens again. Senator John Tester of Montana, thank you, sir, for your time. Really appreciate it. And thanks for all you're doing. Have a good you evening. You bet, Alex. Thank you. For the past two years, President Biden and a task force he assembled have been trying to reconnect the families who remain separated. And this week, we got an update. The Biden administration and its task force have reunited 600 of those families. But 998 children remain separated to this day. 
Joining us now is Lee Gallant, Deputy Director of the ACLU's Immigrants' Rights Project. He has been fighting to reunite these separated families since 2018. Lee, thank you so much for being here. I know I've talked to you about this for years now, and I suppose it is good news. I mean, it definitely is good news that hundreds of children have been reunited, but a thousand of them still without their parents. Can you talk a little bit about what this reunification process is like and how and why it is so difficult? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me, Alex. We, we have talked about this and we talked about it years ago. And who would have thought we were still going to be in this situation when we're talking about little kids who were separated, hundreds and hundreds of kids below the age of five who now have spent maybe four fifths of their life without their parents. So one of the reasons we haven't been able to f even find all the family, we're still looking for 100 families just to make contact with them. We had hoped the Biden administration would move quicker to try and reunite families, but that's sort of water under the bridge. Now the process is moving, but it's been a slow process, unfortunately. And so even though we know where most of the families are now, we need to get them reunited because every day they're without their parents is unbelievable. And as you said, it's been a Herculean effort just to find the parents. We've had people on the ground, uh, you know, the our co-counsel, I mean, our, our steering committee has been working on that. It's just been unbelievable. And, and I think the challenge now for us, and that's why I appreciate you doing this segment, is to make the public realize that this is not all over. As you said, people took to the streets in the beginning. It's the worst thing that I had ever seen in 30 years. But now I think everyone thinks, well, it's over. It's over. And it's not over for two reasons. One is exactly what you said, is that 900-plus families are still not together. But the other part of it is, even when they're brought back together, there is such deep-seated trauma that we have so much work to make the, do to make these families whole. I mean, I'm working with these families, and when they're, when they're reunited, a three-year-old, a four-year-old just stands by the window looking to see if men are going to come and take them away again. I mean, I think as parents, we all know, we, we swear our children know there's no monsters in your room, we'll leave a light on. But these children actually have experienced people coming and taking them away in the middle of the night. So it's not just that we need to get these thousand back together again, but we really need to do everything we can so they're not re-separated, they're not been sent back to persecution, they're given mental health help, they're given some compensation for what they went through. I'm just, I am so shocked that we're talking about the, the youngest children here. I'm sure there's a range of ages but is it really some of these three-year-olds and four-year-olds that still haven't been reunited with their families? And is anybody, yeah, I mean, what conditions are they in now? Are they with foster care? I mean, where are they living if they're not with their parents? Yes, what we know is, and you know, the Biden administration puts the number at 3,900 that were separate. That's because those were legally the ones who were part of the class. We believe that, there were, we know that we're over 5,500 separate and we're fighting to get them all relief because some of them were not put into the lawsuit, into the class action by the judge because of very, very minor crimes the parent may have committed decades ago. So of those 5,500, we know that there were approximately 900 that were under the age of five years old when they were separated. Some were less than a year old. So now we're talking years and years that they had not been with their parents. They're with foster care. They're with relatives that they never knew. They could be with a friend of the family. And a lot of them don't even remember their parents anymore. So we have this situation of the children saying, well, this person I'm living with seems okay, and I don't really remember my parents. I mean, it's just, it's just heartbreaking that these children are now growing up without their parents. And, uh, you know, the focus has been on the children, understandably, but the parents are just suffering so much because they're feeling so much guilt. The children are being returned to their parents and saying, Mommy, Daddy, why didn't you stop them from taking me? Didn't you love me enough? Because they're literally watching their parents, and as they're being pulled away, begging, don't let them take me, don't let them take me. And, of course, the parents are helpless. And sometimes the first thing they literally say when they come back is, why didn't you stop them from taking me? Didn't you love me enough? And it just obviously is breaking these parents' hearts, so they need help as well. Lee, I know that, I mean, I, I, as a mother of a three and a five-year-old, it is gut-wrenching to hear all of this. 
And you would think we would have learned our lesson about the cost of dehumanizing people. But this is occurring against a backdrop where Governor DeSantis is asking for 12 more million more dollars to start continue schlepping migrants to points north with no resources on the ground when they're met. Uh, Governor Abbott of Texas wants to continue this, pro this process of taking migrants to places they never intended on going. I mean, what does this state of affairs tell you about lessons learned since the Trump, the Trump administration? Yeah, I think you're, you're hitting it exactly right, that it's a dehumanizing effect. I think what's happening is that the discussion is largely turning on aggregate numbers and abstract policy arguments, and the human dimension is getting lost. And I think America rebelled against, the whole world rebelled against what Trump did because they could see viscerally these children, they could think of their own children. But now the same things, it may not be exactly the same thing where we're literally taking children away from their parents. But there is just egregious things going on. And I think people are not getting upset because these migrants have been so dehumanized. It's, I think we didn't learn the lesson. You're exactly right. And I also fear that the separation stuff is out of sight, out of mind. And until you know, we start focusing, and that's our challenge to remind people it's not over. We still have a thousand families to get back together. And after that, there is so much work to make them whole. But, but you're right, it's, it's about othering people and dehumanizing them because I, I, don't, I think when people think of their own child, as you said, a three and a five year old being taken away, they, they shudder at that. But then when it becomes more abstract, well, what should we do for them, this and that, you know, people sort of lose focus and we need to keep focus on the fact that these families have been so uh, wrongly abused. But President Biden said it was a moral stain on the United States but now I fear that a lot of people are forgetting what happened to these children. And we have little children who haven't seen their parents in four years now. Uh, Lee Gallant of the ACLU, thank you for everything you are doing. Thank you for reminding us of the moral stain that is very much still here in America. Thanks for yeah. your time and expertise. Thanks for having me. It's good to see you. You too. Joining me now is Democratic Congressman from Connecticut, Jim Himes. He is the top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee and has been briefed on the situation surrounding this Chinese surveillance balloon. Congressman Himes, thanks for being here. I'm just going to get right to it. In terms of this balloon, are we in danger at present right now, as far as you can tell? Does this balloon, should this balloon be taken down immediately? Alex, uh, we are in no danger from this balloon. Um, and if we were, or if there was a risk that we were, it would have been taken down immediately. Um, this is not a new technology. Uh, we've seen this before. To my knowledge, this is the first time we've seen it over the middle of the continental United States. But we, we, we know what these things are. They're not a danger. If they were, they would be shot down. I, I, I would make the point that... Um, um, it's obviously very embarrassing for the Chinese, and it's actually, you know, pretty aggressive of the Chinese. We, we spy on each other. That'll come as a surprise to nobody. We try to steal their secrets. They try to steal ours. Um, floating a balloon over the continental United States is pretty aggressive. Um, I, I'll just make this point as somebody who lives in the world of intelligence, because I got an awful lot of friends and colleagues and others who just want to blam, shoot this thing down and teach them a lesson or two. I will tell you that there could be enormous, enormous value in our actually securing this thing and finding out precisely what it is that there's there. So, um, you know, how this thing plays out in the next couple of days is still an open question. But, uh, you know, to those who are urging big Hollywood-like explosions, uh, take it from me, uh, there are some things we'd love to know uh, that might be aboard that balloon. Congressman, it's the size of two buses, right? This is not a small object. And it's flying 60,000 feet in the air, which is, yes, high, but the naked eye, a, a telescope, you know, any kind of uh, sight enhancing uh, tool can show you what it is. Do you think that the Chinese in, intended for the American audience to see this thing? Well, that's a really good question. I've been sort of thinking about that all day because this really is an embarrassment. I mean, um, you know, we we go way out of our way. Um, to make sure that the Chinese and the Russians and the Iranians and the North Koreans don't know how we gather, uh, collect intelligence. Um, and as you point out, here's something that anybody with a pair of binoculars can see. And more intriguingly to me, based you know what I just said, um, you know we go to immense lengths to protect the technology and the other methods and sources that we have to collect intelligence. So the fact that they've just sent us a slow-moving 
target um, that that it won't be that hard to secure if you want to do it is 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 really intriguing to me. And I, you know, I want to I want to sort of stop here to say let's 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 not let the conspiracy theories run wild. There's no reason to believe that there's bioweapons aboard or viruses or anything else. Um, I my 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 best guess is that this is a mistake because, like I said, we may end up owning this technology uh, in a matter of a couple of days.